Welcome to Cute Fast Track Series for API Recommended Practice 572 Inspection Practices for Pressure Vessels. In this lecture, we will discuss Clause 9, the inspection methods and limitations. This section provides an overview of the general structure of the text in Clause 9, as well as reviews of some of the important subclauses that are in the clause. The following is a list of all the subclauses as listed in the table of contents. In the following slides we highlight important information contained in Clause 9 accompanied by the subclauses. Before starting the inspection of a pressure vessel, especially one in severe service, the inspector should determine the pressure, temperature, and service conditions under which the vessel has been operated since the last inspection. Should also be aware of equipment construction details, including materials of construction, the presence of internal attachments, and weld details should also confer with operations to determine whether there have been any abnormal operating conditions or disturbances such as excessive pressures or temperatures should develop and exercise sound judgment on the extent and kinds of inspection required for each vessel Surface preparation Appropriate surface preparation is essential to all inspection methods. Corrosion under insulation If external or internal coverings, such as insulation, refractory linings, or corrosion-resistant linings are in good condition and without evidence of an unsafe condition behind them, it may not be necessary to remove them for inspection of the vessel. However, it may sometimes be advisable to remove small portions to investigate their condition and the condition of the metal behind them, particularly if previous inspections have indicated corrosion or if operating conditions present the risk of CUI. Refer to API RP583 for additional information on CUI. Deposits where operating deposits, such as coke are normally permitted to remain on a vessel surface, it is important to determine the condition of the vessel surface behind the deposits. Internals Where vessels are equipped with removable internals, the internals need not be completely removed, provided reasonable assurance exists that damage is not occurring beyond that found in more readily accessible parts of the vessel. General UT UT instruments are now the primary means of obtaining thickness measurements on equipment. UT thickness measurement and flaw detection represents an important technique of NDE inspection. As per API 510, it is acceptable to average several individual thickness readings at an examination point to determine the thickness at the test point. RT radiography may also be used in a limited way to determine thickness of vessel parts such as nozzles and connecting piping. Magnetic flux Magnetic flux scanning techniques are also available that provide a fast qualitative technique for the detection of corrosion losses on large surface areas for vessels up to 0.5 in 1.3 cm wall thickness.
on stream inspection API 510 permits an on stream inspection to be conducted in lieu of an internal inspection under certain conditions. The number and location of thickness measurements, a representative number of thickness measurements, should be conducted on the vessel to satisfy the requirements for an internal inspection. For vessels with low corrosion rates will require fewer thickness measurement locations compared to vessels with higher corrosion rates. For vessels with general uniform corrosion, is to divide the vessel into its major design sections that is shell, head, and nozzles, and identify at least one measurement location for each design item. For pressure vessels susceptible to localized corrosion, additional thickness measurement locations will be required or alternate techniques will be necessary. Limits of thickness After an inspection, there are two most important factors that need to be understood. The retiring thickness of the part considered and the rate of damage. When this excess thickness and the corrosion rate are known, the date when repairs or replacement will be needed for any vessel can be predicted with reasonable accuracy. Most vessels are built with greater thickness in vessel walls and heads than what is required to withstand the internal operating pressures. In some cases, the excess thickness of the shell or head plates is used by the designer as nozzle reinforcement. Since the ASME BPVC is a design and construction standard for vessels, the methods for calculating the retirement thickness of many accessories of pressure vessels are not covered, such as trays, internal tray supports, valves, grids, baffles, ladders, and platforms. Since they are not considered as part of the pressure retaining boundary, applied metallic linings have no set minimum thickness. In the case of exchangers, Minimum thickness values should be developed for tubes, tube sheets, channels, covers, and other pressure retaining exchanger parts. Review questions. Question number one Prior to inspecting a vessel, the inspector should become familiar with the vessels. Answer is A. Question number two. Prior to inspecting a vessel, which of the following does not need to be reviewed by the inspector? Answer is C. Question number three. An external inspection is being conducted on an insulated vessel. How much insulation should be removed to check the vessel's external surface condition? Answer is D. Question number four. Additional information concerning inspecting for CUI can be found in.
Answer is B. Question number five. Which of the following applies when coke deposits are found in a vessel? Answer is A. Question number six. Prior to the internal inspection, vessel internals. Answer is D. Question number seven. The primary means of obtaining vessel thickness measurements is by Answer is B. Question number 8. Concerning an examination point for thickness, which of the following is correct? Answer is D. Question number 9. Magnetic flux scanning techniques can be used to detect wall loss on vessels. Answer is D. Question number 10. A vessel is subject to uniform corrosion. What is the minimum number of thickness measurements required? Answer is C. Question number 11. The number of thickness measurement locations should progressively increase with. Answer is B. Question number 12. A vessel is subjected to localized corrosion. Which of the following is correct? Answer is C. Question number 13. After an inspection, what are the two most important factors that need to be understood? Answer is B. Question number 14. Extra metal in a vessel wall may have been used by the designer to provide. Answer is C. Q. 
Question number 15. ASME Band PV Section 8 does not provide a formula to calculate the retirement thickness of Answer is D. Question number 16. The minimum thickness of a metallic lining on a vessel shell. Answer is D. This lecture is prepared by Samir Saad, and this is his profile.